Hi, I'm Lewis McCaldy again, taking you through to the second part of our tutorials on Synergy Multiviewer. So in this session, we're going to talk about how to configure the inputs in Synergy Multiviewer. In the last session, which if you haven't seen, you should really go back and watch, we went through the installation. So I'm going to turn to this machine now down here, and this machine's got a pre-installed Synergy Multiviewer. And then we're going to pick up on here and set up some inputs. So turning to this PC, we've already got Synergy Multiviewer installed from last time. On the desktop, we should have the Synergy Multiviewer configuration tool, so we can pop this open. Just taking a quick tour through a couple of other tabs before we get started, I've got the Output Settings tab turned on with a basic window output. So I've just set this up here so we'll be able to run a Multiviewer and see it on this desktop PC. We'll go into much more detail about Output Settings in another session. Quickly also covering the General tab, we've got a couple of options in here where we've got the default audio settings. This means that we can have the Multiviewer completely muted, when nothing selected and control how loud the selected item should be. Also we can calibrate what's zero. The title font here just enables us to control the uh, captions next to each player and we can just let the system automatically set the font sizing uh, on that. And then finally we've got some remote settings. We'll go into remote settings later. So having very briefly touched upon there, we'll look at the tab we want to focus on here. On the input tab I've got a mosaic layout set up. So mosaic just lets us specify a number of columns and a number of rows we can then add as many players that will fill that into this left-hand side. So having set two columns and two rows, I should now then be able to define four inputs and have those appear on screen. So I've got four set up here. So if I run Multiviewer, we should get these appear on my screen. So what I'm going to do is take you through some of the parameters available for this BBC One HD stream that we've got here. So if I look on here, I should be able to then drill into the individual components on this part. So we've got BBC One HD set up here, and we've got an RTP input. So we've got the title displayed on the screen here, and then I've got an RTP mode. So if I look in here, I can also set SDI. So if I had SDI sources into this PC, I could pick one of the four supported SDI devices and then use the inputs des described under that to pick the right settings for that board. So if I set to AJA, I can see I get some more options for board number and channel number, this is dependent upon the model of the board. But what it lets us do is take a standard SDI input and treat it in the multiviewer the same way we would an IP. But let's leave it on RTP right now because I've got some multicast streams. Underneath the RTP setting, we've got the URL. This is a standard multicast address. So we've got BBC One emitting here on our network, uh, coming through an off-air receiver and putting that on here. So this is a standard uh, Synergy format RTP multicast URL, which is described in future sessions, and it's also described on Synergy Open. So if we look at the second panel, we've got an IP listen. So this should be set to the adapter we want to use on this PC to listen for the multicast on. If you leave it at zeros, it will just listen on all available adapters. But if you wanted to listen on particularly one network card, you could fill in the IP address of that network card there. So having set the source, let's move down to the next section. So under the parameters section, this is where we can set some general things. We can pick what keyboard letter we want to assign to the player itself. So if I now set that to A, if I press A on the keyboard, then the multiviewer will select that player and we'll be able to hear it. If I set the, an increased number of audio meters, I can push this up to four. We'll get more audio meters displayed on here. I can also manipulate the background colors and the border colors of these players here for aesthetic appearances. If we choose decode UMD info, if you have a copy of Synergy Air or Synergy Capture running, this metadata is pushed into the stream. So by ticking this, it's saying we'll pull that straight out of the stream as it comes in. Having made these settings, I can hit Apply, and Multiviewer will automatically restart to show me what we've done. So if I do that, we can now see we've got much more PPM area in here. We can also see that the second stream is an AC3 or Dolby Digital stream, and we can look at these levels here. What you'll also notice is we've now taken up quite a bit more screen real estate, and this has shrunk in the video area. So what we can do is move down to the next section and take a look at how we can change that. So under Panels, the first thing we can tick is please place all these panels inside the frame. So if I tick that and hit Apply, this will restart, and we should see that then these panels are now semi-transparent and over the video, so the video is back up to full size. We can also turn on some extra options. So we can turn on some technical stream metadata, we can turn on our alarm panels, and we can turn on the VANC panel. So if I turn all of those on and then hit Apply, we should find a lot more information appears in here. 
So we can now see that BBC One HD is an H.264 stream in HD, full HD raster and 25 frames per second. We can also see we've got a green alarm lock on data, so data's good, video is decoding correctly, and two audio feeds are decoding correctly. We've got two disabled audio feeds because the stream describes them as being absent, so that's not an alarm. We can also see underneath this VANC section some interesting things. So the CC and the PR entries are shown empty here. That's because this is a European stream. And we don't have any 608, 708 captions or parental rating VCHIP values inside the stream. So they're just disabled and grey. If this was an ATSC-based stream, those would light up if either of these elements were present and display the value. However, we do have an AFD, which is shared in the standards between ATSC and DVB. This AFD, or Active Format Descriptor, is showing a value of 14, which is approximately described as a 16 by 9 picture. We can let people see from the multiviewer exactly how this content should be interpreted, and if that's been interpreted correctly. The other thing you'll notice is we're starting to actually impinge on the picture quite a bit now. So the one thing we can do is shrink these audio panels a bit so we can pop back to parameters and choose compact mode. So we hit apply here. We should find then we lose the indication that we're on AC3, but we get much smaller audio indicators. Finally, we can turn the loudness panel on. So the loudness panel is a really interesting panel for being able to determine both the instantaneous loudness and the momentary loudness rather of the signal, uh, as well as if we've got a Dolby signal, it decodes and displays the dial norm value set. So we can see here we've got a much higher loudness value for the normal PCM encoded audio and MPEG audio encoding than we do the Dolby digital encoding. So we can look at these values here and see them, and these can be alarmed upon as well. So that's now this stream turned on with lots of extra technical values. Let's move down to the next panel. So here is where we can choose for this particular player what elements we're interested in analyzing. So if I turn on analysis of audio one and VANC, that's gonna let me engage some extra parts of the engine. So that's gonna let me engage alarming for if we go black or silent or outside of loudness specifications. And if we've got the VANC analysis on, that will actually let me access the captioning data that might be included in the stream. If I go in here and then enable DVB and set that to 5404, which is the value for the subtitling PID on this service and hit apply, So there we started the multiviewer, and there we can see DVB bitmaps have been picked up and decoded. So we can see them in color as if they were from a set-top box in the correct position uh, for where they've been pushed against the service as if a viewer would see them. So we've gone through the input tab inside of multiviewer now, and we've added extra options to see loudness and DVB decoding. What we're going to do in the next session is move away from the basic mosaic mode into the designer mode, where we can place the players into customized locations and add multiple layouts. So I hope you join me in that one.